This is podcast number 23. And uh, continuing our discussion of evolution and how it is we went from one-celled organisms to multicellular organisms. Eukaryotic, eukaryotic organisms are the exclusive multicellular uh, organisms. And so how is it that uh, we evolved multicellular multicellularity. You, as a person, have uh, are made up of trillions of cells. Um, and why is that better than a single cell? So there are organisms out there that are. It's it's um, it's difficult to say simple, uh, but certainly less complex in terms of organ systems and. Um, behaviors and that sort of thing. One of those is the multicellular alga volvox. So this is a algae plant that lives together uh, in this um, as a colony of cells. And this has been used by some researchers as sort of a, a model for, you know, what's good about living together as a bunch of cells versus single cells. Um, if you look at how Volvox species are related to each other, um, there are uh, unicellular Volvox um, uh, in uh, genera is a um, classification term. Like you are the species Homo sapiens and Homo is the name of your genus. So in the genus Volvox, there are four species that have only one cell, uh, and then two species that have four cells, five species that have between 8 and 32 cells per colony, eight species between 8 and 16 colony for cells per colony, and then 16 species with greater than 32 uh, cells per colony. So how they're related to each other seems to be related to how many cells there are in the colony. This is a tree made of, uh, based on their DNA sequence. Um, and we'll just walk through this tree. And um, if we look at just the, the size of the individual cells, um, according to uh, uh, their volume, the volume of the individual cells, and how frequently uh, you find those cells in a colony. Um, you have uh, unicellular volvox that has this size distribution where the most frequent uh, cells are um, about three mic cubic microns in uh, size, some bigger, some smaller. And if we look at colonial Volvox, the most frequent um, uh, size of Volvox living in a colony is bigger, um, about 4.6 cubic microns. So maybe uh, living in a colony, colony lets your cells get bigger. Um, if why is bigger better uh, necessarily? Well, uh, small cells can grow faster, so why get big? Um, and small colonies grow faster. Um, but if we just compare within, uh, so there's a range of um, cell size in unicellular, one cell volvox, and there's a range of cell size in colonial volvox. <clears throat> but what if we try to compare apples to apples and say, let's just look at cells that are between 4.4 and 6.4 cubic microns in size. Uh, is there an advantage uh, to being in a colony versus being uh, a single cell? And if you compare those two, it sure looks like the ones that are in colonies grow faster than the ones that are single cell. And then if we look at uh, growth rate uh, of these um, colonies, the in within a Volvox colony, I'll show you this picture again. 
you have some cells that are really big like this guy right here that's a really big cell and that's a really big cell and those cells have specialized function in uh, they, in that they are for reproduction so if we just look at those cells and how do they do in a colony versus not being in a colony so if we uh, if we look at just a isolated reproductive cell and how fast it can grow over time this is uh, its size its volume and size it does grow over time at a certain rate this is this purple line here but if we take the colony that it's in and disrupt it and uh, look at it again uh, it grows slower and if we leave it intact in the colony it grows faster so an advantage for the cell being in a colony versus not in a colony in terms of growth rate and if we look at different types of cells and how fast they can grow and the range of which they can grow, this is a single cell um, uh, algae called Chlamydomonas. This is a cell that grows in a layer, so just like almost like a two-dimensional film. Um, and then approaching a colony of Volvox and then a full-on Volvox uh, 3D ball colony. And as you get uh, more three-dimensional and more multicellular, uh, the growth rate of the, of the organism increases uh, over time, over this, this sort of comparison. So um, it may be that being um, in a uh, colony uh, gives you an advantage in that you can grow faster. If you are in a natural selection situation, if you grow faster than the organisms you're competing with, you can get the resources faster and then you reproduce um, at a higher rate and you have a selective advantage. Now these experiments were done under high nutrient conditions. Under low nutrient conditions you don't get this sort of difference. So when times are good it's a it, it may be a, be an advantage to be being a multicellular organism there's all kinds of other advantages too in that you can divide up different tasks for different sorts of cells like uh, I'm I showed you that picture before of uh, Volvox uh, having specialized reproductive cells so you can um, uh, dedicate that function to that kind of cell. Not every cell has to do every little function. And certainly um, multicellular organisms have taken that to an extreme in that you have whole groups of cells or organs that do specialized function like reproduction or filtering of waste or concentrating urine or pumping uh, fluid throughout the body, uh, that sort of thing, or protecting the organism from the outside environment like skin. Um, so you have a division of labor. If you're a single cell organism and somebody kills that cell, the whole organism is dead. Whereas if you're multicellular, uh, the organism can lose um, cell uh, a population of cells to disease and still the organism survives. Every time you brush your teeth, you kill off all kinds of cells um, and yet you survive. Um, so there are many advantages uh, that would give organisms an advantage in a natural selection situation where being multicellular would be selected for and being unicellular would be selected against.